What's good, y'all? It's your boy Lombardicus Prime, and we got a little bit of housekeeping here before we get into this Dallas Cowboy video for today. Uh, just wanted to announce that we are going to be doing a monthly Patreon giveaway to all patrons. I'll be making a video to, um, you know, to announce those people or that person, however I choose to do that, um, later on this week. So look out for that video. That'll be for all patrons, not just the ten dollar people, but the one, two, five, ten, whatever tier patron you are, you will be entered in that Patreon giveaway so y'all stay tuned in for that um we're trying to we're trying to you know move a lot of merch this year uh so that'll be once a month also i'll be giving our merch for these little homework assignments that we have right i was hating on some dallas radio guy last week and uh he was like oh this is the first time cowboys have done this have done this triple option look and i remember breaking that down on film because that's what we do here at the vash lombardi show and i gave the homework assignment i was like hey man the first person in my chat box that can that can tell me the game i was breaking down with the exact timestamp because some people told me the game or they said what happened or they said hey Vach, it was eagles but they didn't do the homework assignment correctly yeah you know i mean so when i tell people this will be on the test you need to listen yeah you know i mean um this was on the test and dylan briggs who was very aggressive because <laughs> dylan sent me an email days ago hey watch i got the answer right what, what do i get I got you, fam. Hang tight. But he says, Vach, that triple option play was ran in the Eagles game. You covered it on the Dak versus Eagles film at 238. You know what I mean? So, hey, if y'all want to see the example I was talking about, go to me breaking down the Eagles game, Dak versus the Eagles, and check out that timestamp. Dylan, you did the homework assignment correctly. Uh, I will be reaching back out to you and your aggressive email, and I'll be sending you uh, your merch soon. So appreciate you. Uh, also, what we do here, uh, if it's just a dope comment that just, you know, kind of grabs my attention and just stands out to me or made me feel any kind of way, I'll be highlighting that comment. So shouts out to Vince J. Uh, this comment was hilarious to me. Like, like, I actually laughed at this comment, right? He was like, um, he was like, uh, more like establishing the run is mandatory. Everybody hypes Tony Pollard. Fine. Trade Zeke and see how good he does then. And look, in my mind, I was like, hey, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. I ain't said nothing about trading Zeke. But then I hit the, the see more button. And he was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> I know he didn't say anything about Pollard over Zeke. But a lot of our fans think Pollard is better than Zeke because Pollard has a few splash plays. You know what I mean? And um, this really made me laugh. It was hilarious because right when I was about to hit him with the, I didn't say that, fam, he hopped into his own comments, uh, into his own replies, and he hit me with the, huh, not you, Vach. <laughs> not you, Vach. I'm just cussing fans out. So, Vince J, you had a dope-ass comment, man. This is me highlighting your dope comment. All right? Uh, let's watch some film, y'all. Salute. What's cracking, y'all? It's Vash Lombardi. We're here with a uh, with another video. I don't really work for the holidays, so I did this video a like a day ago. But uh, I think today is an appropriate day to drop it um, <clears throat> because I just wanted to defend Amari Cooper real quick. Y'all know there's this portion of Cowboy fans that I like nothing about, and um, they're doing that thing that they do on um on social media you know so is there there are those cowboy fans then there's cowboy fans that'll at least listen to a different perspective and they'll just kind of go from there so just in case there's anybody that watches my show that listen to what i gotta say that may have any ill ill feelings about amari cooper i just wanted to provide a little bit of perspective um on on how i feel and i think we should all get off amari of cooper's back um I think how Amari Cooper's been playing is a, is a combination of things. I think it's because he's so fantastic and like he's being too tough for his own good. People call him soft because he's kind of, you know, given, you know, like he's sulking a little bit. His energy ain't hot. Bitch, Amari Cooper's energy is never hot. And hell, he's he's losing. He's in a turbulent situation right now. So, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm not the, the biggest fan of someone hanging their head and and you know showing the emotion of a losing season i mean i'm not the the hugest fan of that but i'm not gonna knock him for it um we have the number one offense in in the in the national football league we we may be two or something now because james want to throw for 600 yards a game or some goofy stuff like that but 
I just wanted to defend Amari Cooper because now people are in this notion of, hey, let's get rid of Amari Cooper and let's try to draft some draft some some new receiver. Like that's some shit that's gonna work, right? Um, and Amari Cooper still does things like this, right? Like this is a it looks like a one high man look or whatnot. The Eagles play man coverage on us, but this one safety that that's really you know patrolling the entire field he said man look i know Gallup and cobb over there that's cool but like i'm gonna bail out because amari cooper scares the hell out of me you know what i mean that's called safety help people um even when you watch the best cornerback in the league you know air quote whatever i ain't here to debate that but jalen ramsey um cooper in the rams game or whatnot cooper didn't have a big game in the rams game jalen ramsey was covering him um plus like they put safety help jalen ramsey had safety help on amari cooper um and it seems like all these things are, are and you know, Dak was kind of late with the ball there, um, but all that kind of factors into it. It seems that we, <clears throat> we, we forget about all the good that's happened just because the numbers don't reflect, you know, what we like, what we really wanted to reflect. And I think that kind of sucks uh, from, from Cowboy fans. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Um, you know, if you look at, if you look at some other receivers in the league, right? Like DeAndre Hopkins doesn't have a great, uh, like a, a great numbers game every single week. Julio Jones, I think, just now got a got a touchdown like last week or something like that, or like he's been on this long touchdown drought or whatever. Um, you know, somebody will say Michael Thomas. Well, cool, Michael Thomas has been fantastic, but then like you know what I mean? Like it, like this thing isn't gonna consistently be great every year. So you gotta look at it look at it in the sense of what does he do to the offense? Hey, let's let's bring this back. I'm just bringing this this uh, film here. Amari Cooper's gonna gonna go in motion. We're gonna bring guy over, but we are gonna bail the hell out. You know what I'm saying? Because Amari Cooper scares the hell out of us. You know what I mean? All this is real. All this is a real thing. You know what I mean? So let's not just let the numbers dictate how we feel about Amari Cooper. I think he's been playing tougher uh, than people are giving him credit for, right? Um, if you think about his his injuries or whatever, he's had plantar fasciitis since training camp. You know what I mean? And you only really cure plantar, plantar, plantar fasciitis. I don't think you cure it. I just think it kind of goes away after a while. But it, 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 it only really heals after like nine weeks and rest. And Cooper ain't really been resting. He's been playing every single week. He's had an ankle uh, since since week week four, a quad since week six, a bruised knee since uh, week ten, and the other knee since week thirteen. You know what I mean? Like l like let's not act like he's just out here perfectly healthy. And and he's had oh Coop, you've had time to heal. Let you stop being soft. Stop being soft. I think we're being unfair, and I think a lot of Cowboy fans are being super emotional here. Um, I saw one one person say, "Well, uh, I see I see Michael Gallup emerging, so let's get rid of Coop, draft a complimentary receiver, and let Michael Gallup take over." Well, hell, we saw what happens when Michael Gallup is the main guy. We saw what happens when he takes over. And hey, if if uh, uh, you know, just like the example that I that I showed you earlier. If the example is, hey, if we're going to get the attention on Coop, then Michael Gallup gets one-on-one -on -one coverage against civilians, then cool. Let's let Michael Gallup be that guy. That's like that's like Muhammad Sanu being fantastic in, um, um, with the Falcons when Julio Jones carries all the weight. But when he gets to New England, you know, Muhammad Sanu isn't as, as fantastic as he once was. You know what I'm saying? I think all that stuff kind of, kind of, you know, plays a role in this thing, you know? Um you know, people, people, people saying, "Hey, let's go draft a receiver." Man, it's hard to find number one receivers this year. In in in, in this day and age, and it's it's hard to find true. No, we can't have drops neither. Oh God, <laughs> I'm just looking at the film. We can't have drops neither. Uh, it's hard to look, like look how long it takes for teams to find true number one receivers. Teams mostly just run out two number twos because they can't find a number one receiver. And teams still play two number two receivers differently than they play a team with a true number one and some gangsters on the other side. I like what we have with Amari Cooper. I really do. Um, he may not give you the numbers that you that you want, but we walked into and let me fix that. Let me fix that. Cause like for nine weeks he was the he was a top five receiver for nine weeks. So let me not say no goofy shit like that. He was a he was a top five receiver for nine weeks. But going into this season, right? Going into this season, I've said this plenty of times. Chat box, say preach if you've heard me say this before. We're gonna walk into some games and 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 we're not gonna have the same stars every single game. 
You know what I mean? Say, say like, 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 like one week Randall Cobb goes smooth off. Another week, Michael Gallup goes off. Another week, versus the Rams, Ezekiel Elliott and 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 Tony Pollard and Dak Prescott get forty carries, and each of the receivers get one pass, one catch. Michael Gallup, uh, Randall Cobb, Amari Cooper, uh, freaking Tavon Austin, versus the Rams. They each got one catch that game. We just won the we just won the game by 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 running the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, this offense is built to where anybody can be fantastic. You know what I mean? So when we have a game where, like, Zeke just went on this long stretch. Not not a long stretch, but he just went on this stretch of getting his 100-yard games back. But before that, there was like a four-game stretch where Zeke was rushing for like 60 or so. But Gallup would be going off, or Jarwin would be going off. You see what I'm saying? I just think people really got in their emotional bag this week. People really just wanted to beat the Eagles. I don't even think, I mean, it, this this may just be something as simple as people didn't want to deal with their Eagle friends, and, you know, they just got to deal with that. But the emotions are super high. I hate when emotions get high because now y'all want to get Dak up out of here. And when I say y'all, I don't mean me and rational people. I mean these goofy-ass fans that want to get Dak and Amari Cooper up out of here. Listen, man. Sign Dak Prescott. Sign Amari Cooper. When it comes down to draft, draft as many guys on on defense as you possibly can. I'm going to make another uh, think piece about hidden yards and what I really think um, this team is missing on on that side of the game or whatever. But people ask me, Vach, what do you think we should draft? Should we draft a, a tight end? Should we draft a receiver? I'm really I'm not trying to draft very much offense this year. I'm trying to really go hard on defense and make that thing dominant. You know, I think a lot of the hidden yards that we have is through defense. You know, um, teams may not give up a whole bunch of points on us, but there's a lot of hidden yards when they drive the ball and don't score, but we punt what well, they punt and we end up getting the ball at like the 40 or something. You know what I mean? That don't happen a lot. We don't, we don't always get the ball at the 40 or the, the 50. What happens is they drive it and they kick field goals and then they kick off. And we get the ball at the, at the damn twenty every time. Like like kickers against the Cowboys. Look, somebody find that find that PFF stat. Somebody that pays PFF for their little numbers and charts or whatever. Check out kicking stats versus the 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 Cowboys. Right, you either gonna score a touchdown at, at some point or you gonna drive the hell out the football and kick a field goal. And Dallas gets the ball at their twenty a bunch, or we get pinned inside the five a bunch. Dallas offense really don't get a whole bunch of field position like that. And I think that's where a lot of these hidden yards coming from, um, uh, where you gotta make your offense drive 80 yards every single um, every single drive. Th that ain't had nothing to do with this video. I kind of got out, you know, got off on a little tangent there. This 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 is really about Amari Cooper and how I want Cowboy fans to be a little better to him. This man has has gotten hurt six times this year, and he ain't really been sitting out. He ain't really been been sitting out at all. You know what I mean? Like you know, like I said, man, I, I don't really like the 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 whiny behavior or whatever, but Cooper normally doesn't doesn't show us emotion, you know what I mean? And he really ain't been whining. He's just really been not talking or whatever, you know what I mean? But that's 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 uh that's Cooper behavior. But let's not forget how fantastic he was just because he's having uh you know, having a, a you know, just a handful of off games, or whatever. The the same the same with Zeke. You know what I mean? First they hate uh, first they love it and they hate it, then they love you again. Same thing with Zeke. You know, he 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 comes out and start running the ball over everybody. Then you love Zeke again. Everybody changed their mind. So I just wanted to make this video to say, hey, don't be a cowboy fan that changed your mind every single week. You know what I mean? That that shit ain't cute. All right. Um I appreciate y'all, man. Hold it down for the Doski Woski, man. Peace. My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to affordablesticks.com. They sent me a fire stick. Plug that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's affordablesticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. After canceling my cable, I saved $2,400 this year by switching to Beast TV through channelsforcheap.com. 
some people pay 200 plus dollars a month i paid 120 a year or you can go 15 a month if that's what's convenient for you you get 2500 hd channels a thousand of those are in english and there are plenty of other international channels tv guide and we get all the sports one of my favorite things is multi-screen feature so if i don't know what i want to watch i can tune into four different channels at one time that you can watch on four different devices and it's available on fire sticks smart tvs tablets and if you're on the go you can watch tv on your phone Hit the link in my description or go to channelsforcheap.com where you can get a free seven day trial. That's a whole week for you to just sit down and play with it and see what you like about it. Then come back and make a purchase. Because if you have any questions, go to channelsforcheap.com. Hit this little button right here and they'll respond to you immediately. That is channels number four cheap.com. The link is in the description. I highly recommend it. Let's do it.